So for example, let's say we have an MCP server that has a couple of tools that can respond to questions from TechCrunch. We can drag it into an agent and then we can test at that agent. So for example, we might say, what is the latest news on TechCrunch? And ideally, um, we have an LLM driving this agent. The first thing we see is that the LLM uh, is able to list all the tools on the TechCrunch server. And essentially, it makes that request and then we get a final result. And we can look at it and this is sort of all that comes back from TechCrunch. The other interesting thing is that the same server can be used in, let's say, any host application that supports MCP. In this case, this is uh, VS Code and we have this exact same server running locally. And for the most part, we can ask the same question to our GitHub Copilot agent. What is the latest news on TechCrunch? And what we expect again is a similar behavior. We have an LLM here. It's able to figure out, oh, you know, I have access to this MCP server. There's this tool. I'm going to make a call to the tool. And based on that, we sort of get results. And so the question is, how can we build this sort of service from scratch? Um, and that's what we're going to cover in this little tutorial. It's actually quite straightforward. Let's dig in. Okay, so before we go ahead and write any code, um, I think it's sort of useful to sort of familiarize ourselves with a few high level concepts. The first thing to sort of note is that um, MCP is a client server architecture. And so here the server sort of exposes or um, sort of implements most of the capabilities we want to expose. So for example, in the demo we just walked through, we had a tool that could fetch news from TechCrunch. So all of that logic sort of lies or is implemented within the server. Now the server can do a few other things like provide resources or so data um, data structures that an LLM or an application can use, things like prompts and a few other things. The second is the concept of a client and um, what it mostly does is to maintain um, a one-on-one -on -one connection with a server over um, the concept of a session. And then finally, we have, I think, what I think is perhaps the most important bit, the host application. Now, typically, your client will leave within the host application, and it's responsible for making all connections or establishing a session with the server. And then finally, the server sort of exposes all of the other tools that your host application can use just over this connection or this transport between the client and the server. Now, the final concept here has to do with transports. And so MCP standardizes on the JSON RPC 2.0 spec, spec and sort of offers two um, potential transport options. And you can think of a transport as a sort of communication mechanism or the wire protocol that's used to communicate between the client, which is embedded in your host application and the server. Now you would want to use the standard IO, um, which is essentially a sub process that runs locally um, over standard input output um, on your local machine. And what you should sort of understand here is that um, the expectation here is that the server sort of runs on the same machine with the client and we have like a sub process that enables this communication between both of them. Now, for many applications, this is not ideal because you want to separate the execution environment of the server from that of the client or your host application. You typically don't want both of them running in the same environment. And in cases like that, you want to implement the second transport, which is streamable HTTP. And so all of this works over the web. Um, it's sort of very, um, it's the, the, the right thing to use for um, um, a distributed kind of setup where you might have a single server and you might have multiple clients or host applications that sort of connect and sort of use all of the resources or capabilities provided by that server. In this case, we're going to use the MCP Python SDK. And the first thing we want to do is to import um, fast MCP. And in this case, we're going to define a host URL. And so here we're going to say read from an environment variable or just run it on local host. And next we define a port, we can read that from an environment variable or we set it to 8011. The next thing we want to do is that we can use this simple tool annotation. And what this just says is that if we annotate any function um, using this, um, this little tool, this nifty tool annotation here, and we run this server, so any client that connects to this server and does it like a list tool, we sort of um, be able to connect to this tool. So the logic, the internal logic here is not as important, but the idea is here is that we have a function 
it has a signature where it takes in a category as an uh, as an argument and it defaults to latest and here um, what we just do is that we use the request um, package we sort of uh, make a request to TechCrunch on a specific um, tag and so this might be a latest it might be AI startup all of that we we'll get the results we do some formatting and we we'll return that super easy the final thing here is that when we sort of run this MCP server we sort of specify that the transport should be um, streamable HTTP so if we look at this we will also see that like stdio is supported and so that's also a possibility but in this case we're going to sort of focus on the remote MCP server okay once we have this, we can run this file. Um, say we run this, and don't worry about the code. Um, I'll put a link to the code in the in the diagram um, in the in the video later on. So once we have this running, um, that's pretty much all we need to do. We can head over to um, a host application. In this case, VS Code. We put in a configuration, an MCP server configuration here. And here we just, because this is a remote server, we can put in a URL. We might put in an optional header version and we can see that it's running. And if we switch to our chat interface, um, uh, GitHub agent chat, this is how we're able to sort of use it. Now, but that's not what we are focused on here. We want to see how we can build our own client to sort of connect to the server. So let's go head over to the client.py file. Um, Again, it's sort of relatively straightforward. We will use the MCP Python SDK. And here, the next thing we want to support uh, define is that we're going to use the streamable HTTP transport client. The first thing we want to do is we want to define the host and the port. So we need to construct the server URL. So here we sort of get the host port and, and by default, um, the MCP server is sort of mounted on the slash MCP endpoint. Next, we sort of establish a session um, and then we initialize that session. Next, we can then list all of the tools that are available in this on this server. And so for example, if we sort of um, mask out all of these, um, what we expect to see is that, um, say we run this file. Once we run to we expect a list of all of the um, tools that are av available on the server. Okay. Okay, let's double check if we have the right URL. Oh yeah. So we see tool response. We're missing uh, some code here. Tool response. Let's put that in here. Save it. Let's run that again. Okay, so it says available tools um, fetch from TechCrunch. So just for completeness, we can go ahead and add a new tool. Um, let's see. Let's see, we add a dummy tool. Title dummy tool. Dummy tool. And dev dummy tool this is a dummy tool and um <clears throat> essentially what we want to do is to go back and restart our server start the server head over run our client again and ideally we want to see that we have two tools here so we can see that we have like the first tool um fetch from TechCrunch, and we also have the second tool a uh, dummy tool and so now we have a server, a client, and um, we can show that we are able to sort of connect to um, the server. Let's see how we can call a tool, um, again, using the Python SDK. And so to list tools, we sort of call session.listTools. And so similarly, yeah, we do have actually some logic for this. Um, similarly, in order to call a tool, um, we can use session.callTool, and in this case, we provide the name of the tool, fetch from TechCrunch, and also we provide an argument, in this case, category. So we can run this again. And here's all the data that sort of comes back from, um, from, from that request. And so all of this is useful, it's working. 
But here we're still manually sort of making the request to the tool. And so that's where we want a host application that does something more intelligently. In this case, we want a host application that can do things like um, just taking a user request. And once we have that user request, we sort of use an LLM. Um, first, we can list all the tools that are available on the server using session.list tools. We can make that available to an LLM. And then based on the user um, query and the list of tools, we sort of construct the right context. We give it to the LLM. The LLM figures out how to call the tool. Um, we get that uh, structure back. We make a tool call. And then we uh, sort of provide a sensible response to the user. Let's take a look at what a host application can look like. Okay, so a host application is going to be a command line application and uh, we can sort of get user inputs from the command line. So we're going to look at the uh, args from the system arguments. If there's like actual text there, we sort of use that as the, um, as the user input. Next, we can define an OpenAI client, which is an LLM. We'll sort of use that down the line. The next thing we want to do is we're going to start a session that lets us connect and list out all the tools in our MCP server. And then we have a handy function called handle user request. Essentially, what this does is that it takes the user request, takes um, a session, our OpenAI client, our tools, and our user input, um, and it constructs mixed calls to the LLMs and does all the good stuff until we get a response. Let's sort of take a look at what that function does. The first thing we have here is that um, we want to convert the tools, the list of tools that we get from our MCP server to a format that the OpenAI um, API can understand. Next, we make a sort of a call to the OpenAI um, LLM endpoint. And so we sort of provide the user inputs, we sort of provide all of the tools. And next, we sort of look at the response that comes back from the API. So most of this API, like most LLMs, um, are quite proficient in figuring out how to sort of construct the right arguments to call tools. We sort of extract the argument that we need to sort of call. Next, we use the session, the MCP session, we call the tool. And then finally, we get the tool response. And so what we'll get back is something like a list of all of the um, all of the data that comes back from TechCrunch. But we, we need this to be formatted in a nice human consumable uh, structure. And so that's why we make the final LLM call where we say, um, you're a helpful assistant. Here's all the results of the tool call, um, provide the final response. And so that's pretty much what it looks like. And so here, we could go ahead and run this uh, host application and we can say things like, um, what is the latest news on TechCrunch? And so we see that here's the task. We see that like um, the LM has sort of come back with um, a selection of the tool to be called and with some arguments and says here the latest of this from TechCrunch. So summarizes all of that nicely. And so that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, so this brings me to the end of this specific video. Um, we covered a few things. So first of all, we talked about high level concepts in the MCP ecosystem, um, a client, a server, a host application and transport protocols. Next, we walked through what the code looked like for creating a simple server that had exposed um, a single tool. We walked over some code uh, for a client and how this client can connect over a session to um, the server and do things like list the available, available tools or call tools and sort of get responses. Next, we looked at how we could take a client, bundle it within um, a host application and sort of use an LLM to sort of drive um, the conversion of a user query into actual responses that involve tool calls. And for sort of observant uh, listeners, this is pretty much what an agent should do. Now, um, there are a lot more interesting things um, beyond just using the tools available from an MCP server. There are a lot more interesting things. Um, there are useful features like um, resources, prompts, sampling, routes, transports. Um, there's also the concept of elicitation where tools can sort of get back uh, results uh, during execution. Um, and I will cover all of those in, in subsequent videos. Um, I'm hoping that this is part one of a set of series um, I'm going to do on the MCP protocol. And um, 
Thanks for listening.